evening with us on this Sunday night. It's been a, been a good day for napping today. I don't know what y'all been doing today, but it's been a good day for napping. And y'all thought y'all had all afternoon for napping, but I'm letting you catch you napping the next hour either. So we're glad to see each and every one of you today or this evening. And it's good to be back in, in the house of the Lord. Uh, I do, I'll go ahead and go through the announcements and remind you, if you do have tithes and offering it this evening, you can drop them at the, in the plate at the, at the end of service. Uh, again, I want to thank you for those that helped out with Stacy uh, and, and, uh, and Rick uh, Phillips and for your giving. Don't forget, we got midweek service. We're back on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. Creek Kids and the youth group and the Bible study will continue in the big attitudes. So glad to be with us this coming Wednesday night. We're going to try and get, get back going and let people know that we're back in church. So if you see anybody or see folks that's been out calling and let them know that we are back in the track and trying to get back going after being shut down. Uh, and also we're going to start a new series next Sunday. Sunday morning I'll be praying for that as I talk about marriage and relationships and things like that. I believe that a lot of marriages and, and homes are under attack right now by the devil. And so I pray that through this, this will strengthen you and encourage you uh, from words directly from the Word of God. Amen. But we're just glad that you're here tonight. We're glad to be here this evening. If you're able to stand up with us, let's stand up together. We're going to go to the Lord and pray for the link. And I ask you to, to lead us in prayer this evening. Let's pray. Lord, well, we're just thank you for this opportunity, God, to make that in your house Seems like it's been a while for us, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to, to serve you and worship you, Lord, and to sing songs and, and hear the preached word. Father, we pray right now that your Holy Spirit would just lead us and guide us and teach us. We thank you for our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we just ask you to, to just move in this service tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Lord,
There I was 
and in truth. If you've got your Bibles, if you want to take them and turn to Philippians chapter 2 tonight, is where I'm going to go. I changed a little bit of what I had before planned. We're going to preach tonight from Philippians chapter 2, and we're also going to talk some more about David. We talked about him this morning, and the bulk of my message will be about David, but it's going to be from another story that we know very well. Amen. Uh, so we're going to get to that in a few, a few minutes. I simply titled this sermon, Selfishness. Amen? Selfishness. This is going to be the topic of the hour, and I believe it's something that we can all hear and that we can all learn from. If we were just deadly, just uh, boldly honest, we have to say that we all have got a little selfishness in us. Amen? As you're finding your place, I'll remind you that uh, if you have tithes and offerings at the end of service, you can drop it in the plate. we be here Wednesday night. We're back on schedule. Let's get back to the house of the Lord on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And our series coming up uh, on Sunday morning, Love as Christ, starts next Sunday. Amen. But if you got your Bible, we're looking at Philippians chapter 2. We're going to begin in verse 3. The word of the Lord says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition. I'm going to read that part again. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, humility, meekness. We've been talking about that on Wednesday nights in, in our study on the Beatitudes. But in lowliness of mind, let each of him, or let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of, of others. Amen. Let's stop there with the reading of the main text, and let's go to the Lord in prayer this evening. Heavenly Father, we come before you one more time in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We come before you humble and grateful, God, of the worship and the time we've already had uh, in this hour, Lord. And I just ask for your anointing now to continue to flow and to continue to touch me. To touch these old lips and this old tongue that I may speak your words, Lord. I pray that you would quicken and touch the hearts of the congregation to receive this, Lord. I pray, Holy Ghost, that you would bring conviction to every one of our hearts, Lord. Because the fact of it is, we all have got a little selfishness in us, God. And I pray that tonight, under the anointing of your Spirit, God, you would purge that from us, oh God. Open up our eyes to the things that we need to change in our own lives. In the name of Jesus, and everybody said. Amen. amen and amen. Uh, I have a, a saying uh, that does, has to do with selfishness that I wrote down I, I, and put on over my desk in my house. I have a, a thing. If you look in my office there, I, I when a scripture hits me a certain way or the Lord speaks to me a certain way, I will type something out or I'll write it down and I'll stick it on the wall. I do it at home and I do it in my office. And there is a saying uh, that I heard some time ago that I wrote down and it has always stuck into my mind and stuck into my heart. And it is this, the person who lives for self alone usually dies the same way alone. Amen. And that has always really kind of rocked my mind and rocked my world to, as I think about selfishness, living for self, uh, being the center of your own universe. When you just live for self and please self and everything that you do is a priority of what you want and what is best for you. And I warn you, amen, the person who lives for self alone usually dies the same way alone. Amen. And I tell you, I preach many funerals. I have preached many funerals over the years where, like, where, where uh, the congregation would be full and many tears would be shed over the person that is laid before me. But can I tell you, I have also preached funerals where there were very few tears shed for the person that was laid in that casket. And you can tell that there was very little love in that family or in that home or for that person because of the life that that person had lived. You better consider the who you're living for, amen. If you just live for yourself, you better beware. Yes, Lord. There's going to be too many people crying at your funeral, right? Mm -hmm. they, might be, they might be tears of joy when they see you leaving, amen. But it's not going to be tears of sorrow because they loved you and they're grieving for your loss. Selfishness. Selfishness. Webster defines selfish like this. Concern excessively or exclusively with oneself. Seeking or concentrating on one's own advantage, one's own pleasure or well-being with 
without regard to others. Amen. Let me give you a harsh reality as I begin this sermon this evening. Life isn't all about you. Right. Let me give you a harsh reality, teenager, young person, a senior adult in here today. Life isn't all about you. I promise you the sun does not revolve around you tonight. Don't revolve around me. Don't revolve around any of you in here today. We are not the center of the universe. Everything does not revolve around us. Right. And to preach on this idea of selfishness, I want to bring some points to you. And I want us to go back and I want us to look at the, so another story of the life of David. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, it's one we know well. It's the famous story of Bathsheba, David, and Bathsheba. <laughs> I preached it many times. You've probably read it many times. You've heard it many times. But I want to go back to it and reflect on a few points from that story as we talk about selfishness tonight. We, we know the story. David goes out on the rooftop. He sees a beautiful married woman who is bathing as she would normally have done in that time. He summons her for a one-night stand. Then he sends her back. But the story takes a dramatic turn when she becomes pregnant by David. David must hide it uh, from his kingdom. David must also hide it from her husband, Uriah. And in this story... We see David, the man who killed Goliath that we talked about this morning. The man who had a heart after God and for God, a circumcised heart, a pure heart before the Lord. We see a man who served the Lord fervently, but he's overcome with selfishness in this story. He's overcome by selfishness in this story, and not only was his life drastically changed, but the lives of others were destroyed Amen. because David was only thinking of himself. Think about it. Let me give you a few points. Number one, then we'll look at the scripture. Number one, selfishness is marked by doing what you want to do and not what you need to do. Yes, selfishness is marked by doing what you want to do and not what you need to do. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, in this story of David and Bathsheba, we read this. It happened in the spring of the year. At the time when kings go out to battle, that David, who was king of Israel, he didn't go, but he sent somebody else. He sent Joab and his servant with him and all Israel. Notice what it says. It says it was the time of the year when who goes to battle? The kings go to battle. Instead of him going himself and him fulfilling his responsibility, he sends his main man, Joab, and his other servants, such as Uriah, out to the battlefield. And yet David remained in Jerusalem. Why? Why is it that David did not go to the time that kings go out to battle? Why did he not go? Well, there is no evidence of, of why he stayed in Jerusalem. There was no meeting. There was no emergency to tend to. There was no national disaster or a pandemic that he had to see about. Amen. But as a matter of fact, we see David in the text bored and roaming around the royal palace. Yes. He didn't have nothing to do. And so he's roaming around and his eyes begin to see, uh, look over his kingdom, and that's when he sees Bathsheba. David stayed in Jerusalem simply because he wanted to. That's right. Simply because he, he wanted to. It was the time that he was to go, but he didn't. You may say, well, what's wrong with that? That doesn't seem like a, a big deal uh, to me. I do what I want to do all the time, you might be thinking. Come on. But this is the problem. David was anointed by God as the king of Israel. Yes, Lord. We just talked about this as I've been preaching about David in and, 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 and 1 Samuel chapter 16. We talked about his anointing. God himself called David to be the king over Israel. He had Samuel the prophet to anoint him. He placed that responsibility upon him to be the king. Not somebody else to fulfill his responsibility, but he gave David the responsibility of being king over Israel. He was called to lead. He was called to be the man. The 
Bible says it's the time when kings go to war. Kings. But David was at home in the palace when everyone else was on the battlefield. David was doing what he wanted to do instead of what God called him to do. Right. David was doing what he wanted to do instead of what God called him to do. Right. Can I just stop there and get off even my notes for just a minute? I'm afraid this is what I see destroying many homes right now in the United States of America. You've got men in the home that are not living up to the God given the responsibility of being a husband, to right. being a provider, to being a priest of the home, yeah. or being a, a, a father in the home. Instead, they're just doing what I want to do and only think about me and not concerned about their wives and their children right. and the responsibilities of the hour. Amen. You've got women in the home. Amen. Right. And they're not concerned about the children. They're not concerned yes. about taking care of the home or taking care of their wives. And they're only concerned about themselves. Sale. Yeah. Yeah. We, I see that from a, from a ministry perspective. I see it time and time again. Married people, mothers and fathers, living like they're single. Come on. They're forsaking their God-given responsibility. When you got married, you got a whole new set of responsibilities. You were given out no one to trust you, but now you've got a responsibility to your husband, and you've got a responsibility unto your wife. Amen. And I've seen so many homes today destroyed because of selfishness. Right. Just as King David, he said, I, well, I, I know I'm king, but I'm just going to do what I want to do. You have that mentality? Oh, I'm going to do what I want to do. Let me tell you something. you got a habit of saying that when it comes to your marriage, if you've got a habit of saying that when it comes to your spouse, let me tell you something, you are a selfish person. Amen. Amen. I've seen so many people, oh, I said, it just breaks my heart. Come on. Well, I'm just going to do what I want to do. Yeah. I'm going to do what I Then they wonder why their marriage That's right. is going down the drains and it's falling apart. Oh, I'm going to do what I want to do. Come on, yep. That's a selfish that's a mark of selfishness. Right. When we say that, I'm going to do what I want to do. If you're constantly uh, thinking in your mind, I'm going to do what I want to do, no matter what my wife says, no matter what my husband, no matter what mom and daddy say, no matter what the pastor says, no matter what God says or what the Bible says, I'm just going to do what I want to do. Can I tell you something, friend? You are selfish and right. self-centered. Right. And I pray as I pray for myself, I pray that God knocks you off the throne of your heart. Come on. Amen. Amen. Because, see, we're called to imitate Christ. Yes, right. We are called to imitate Christ. And he demonstrated for us. I'm talking about this meekness, which is gentleness and kindness. We've been talking about that. But he also demonstrated for us a humility and a selfless attitude. Selfless attitude. How can I say that? Because he left heaven to come down on the cross for your sorry selves. Amen and me too. Selfless was the attitude. I thought we cow when I said that. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2 says this. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. This mind, this mindset, or this attitude that he had. Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation. Someone who was equal with God Almighty in heaven made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a bondservant, humbling himself in the likeness of men. Being in the found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself in obedience to the point of death and even death of the cross. Yes, See what humility he portrayed for us? Right. See what humility, what, what, what service. Think about it. We're called to imitate to that attitude of humility, of service to one another, and emptying of oneself. That's text that we begin to, to read as we begin. He said, don't think too highly of your, more highly of yourself than you ought to. Yeah. I tell you tonight, selfishness will cost you, friend. Selfishness tonight will cost you. Right. If you've got that attitude, well, I'm just going to do what I want to do. 
I'm going to tell you something right now. I pray that before we get out of this service, the Holy Spirit would rock your world. Amen. I pray that the, the words of the Bible tonight, the words of truth, would begin to penetrate your heart. Amen. Because that is not the attitude that any Christian, any God-fearing Bible-believing person should have. I'm just going to do what I want to do. Mm. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Number two. Selfishness is marked by only caring about oneself. Yes. We saw how David said, well, I'm going to do what I want to do. But it goes a little bit further. Selfishness also is marked by only caring about oneself. In David's self-centered actions, there were four people, if you will. There were four people who were hurt by his actions. Yeah. Well, first of all, of course, his men and his, his, his nation that he was leading was truly hurt by his actions. What a leader does, it affects everybody else. I'll be honest with you. What a pastor does, it affects his congregation. Yeah. And so what he did that brought shame and reproach upon David and also brought shame and reproach upon the whole nation. Yeah. His men were hurt by his actions. Think about this. The second person that was hurt by David's selfish actions in this story was Bathsheba. Bathsheba. Have you ever really thought about it? Ladies, you probably have more than men. But she never asked for this. Bathsheba never asked for any of this story. She was just minding her own business. David was the one who was not where he was supposed to be. David should have been away at war. He should have never been on the rooftop to begin with. Bathsheba was doing what she would have normally done in any other routine. There is no evidence in Scripture that she lured him. She was doing as she always done. But she was taken from her home. She was taken from her home, brought into, into David's bedroom chamber. And David slept with her, and then he sent her back after his lust was fulfilled. Right. David had no concern other for that woman other than fulfilling his own fleshly desire. Right. I'm going to say that again. David had no concern over that woman except for fulfilling his own fleshly desire. Yeah. He wasn't concerned about what happened to her. As long as he got what he wanted. And you know what? Because he was that selfish in that moment. Do you know it destroyed her life? Yeah. Have you ever thought it just utterly destroyed Bathsheba's life? She became pregnant by David who was not her husband. Not only that, then David has her husband Uriah killed in battle. Yeah. She loses her husband. And then she is taken from her home and to make to live with David. Right. All of that transpired within a nine-month period. Probably really within a matter of just a few months, actually. Right. He went from sleeping with her to having your right killed and her coming to live with him before the baby was even born. Her life was completely uprooted and destroyed by the selfishness of David in that moment. Yes, hmm. Selfishness makes you blind to the needs and the well-beings of others. Amen. Selfishness makes you blind to the well to, to the needs and the well-beings of, of others. You will destroy another person's life to satisfy your own desires. Yeah. Going back, and, I, and I'm, I'm hung up a little bit on, on marriages and couples because I see this transpire so much in marriages and couples. If you are a selfish person, marriage is going, your, your marriage is going just to be, I'm going to say like this, going to be That's right. Amen. You just see this. Selfishness will destroy your marriage. Amen. Because you want to know why? You're not worried about your husband's needs, 
because you worry about your needs. Don't matter if he goes without or does without or has to suffer or whatever. As long as my needs are getting met, it's all I'm concerned about. Right. Or the vice versa. Right. A husband can be that way. As long as I get what I want and do what I want to do, I'm not worried really about anybody else. You know when you get worried about it? When you see the taillights of that car and she's Come leaving. On, That's many times when a man will get concerned or a woman will get concerned because they're selfish when they see the taillights hitting the highway. And you know what that tells you? I don't understand why they leave. You know what that tells you? know what I've seen people do? It never fails when people come into my office and they have a marital problem. You know what they always do? It's her. And you know what she'll do? It's him. It never fails. Never fails that we ever look in the mirror, but we're always pointing the finger at the other person. It is never us. They're always the problem. Right. Uh-huh. And I'm telling you right now, freaking old mom, get wound up after this relationship series I started in February. You just get ready, amen. I'm telling you, selfishness will destroy your marriage. When you're only concerned about yourself, Selfishness will destroy your friendships. It will destroy families. I've seen good families, good families, close families, be torn apart over selfishness. I wanted that for mama's house. When somebody dies, a family member dies, and then they have to start dividing stuff up or dividing the land. Woo! You talk about that. I don't know what it is, but when somebody dies and then they have to to divide up an estate, that old demon of selfishness, but it will will put the pressure on it, it comes alive. And I've seen many good families be destroyed over a piece of dirt, over a thousand dollars, or over some little trinket that's in the house. When you get selfish people, 
whether they're in the music or whether they're teaching or whether they're in the pews, when you get selfish people in a church, it will hurt good men and women of God. Soldiers of the cross will be hurt when all you are concerned about is oneself. Think about this. Selfishness. I want to write this quote down. Selfishness causes you to worry more about getting caught than doing what's right. Amen. Selfishness causes you to worry more about getting caught than doing what's right. You know what David did with old Uriah? He didn't want Uriah to find out. He was willing to have a man killed to cover his tracks. He was more concerned about getting caught than he was the life of an innocent man. Right. You know what I thought about when I just said that, made that statement? Some people are more concerned about getting caught, finding out, or somebody finding out that they're pregnant, yeah. than the innocent one that's in their womb. Right. You know what abortion is, ladies and gentlemen? It's complete and utter selfishness. Right. You are thinking more about yourself than you are of that gift that God has put in your womb. And people say, well, I, I, I just know this is going to ruin my life. Or what are people going to think about me if I have this child outside of wedlock? And because of selfish reasons, they'll drive to the abortion clinic and allow that child to be ripped from that womb right. of that mother. Let me say this right now. If there's one in here tonight, or if there's one watching me, and you've had an abortion, I want you to know that there is grace, there is mercy, and forgiveness. Yes, Lord. If you have been in that situation, and you made that choice years ago in ignorance, I want you to know that there is grace and mercy and healing from that. But I also want you to know today, young ladies and young men in the United States of America, I believe that abortion in the eyes of God and the Word of God is nothing more than murder. Amen. The Bible says that children are a gift from the Lord. They're a heritage from the Lord. The Bible says in Jeremiah that God knew him before he formed him in his mother's womb. You talk about choice. I, I always tell you, I'm from choice. you got a choice whether you crawl in that bed or not. Amen. But when conception and that heartbeat comes, there is a lie. Right, and that ain't your body because that heartbeat wasn't there before. Right. It's not your heartbeat. It's the heartbeat of, of that child. Yeah. Amen. It's not just a glob of tissue. Come on. It's a life that has been formed and given breath by God. Selfishness will cause you to worry more about being caught Come on. than doing what's right. right. What about this? What about not accepting responsibility for your actions and letting somebody else take the fall. You ever been in a situation like that? Something happened at work and you was the one that done it? But you, when, when Paul Pan found out, you kept your mouth shut and you let somebody else take the fall for it. Ever done that before? You know what that is? That's selfish. That's right. I remember one time years ago when I was a little kid, I served, I think it was third, fourth, fifth grade, I don't know, I was in elementary school. And uh, I remember I got an F on something, I think it was math or history or whatever it was. And I got mad at that teacher for giving that bad grade. That was great. <laughs> and, and I wrote a curse word. And I don't know why mama was nosing around in my book bag and starting with me. <laughs> you know, mamas have a, a way of doing that, amen? amen. And my mama went through my book bag and she found that, that thing. You know what the first thing I told her was? So and so did it. <laughs> I done everything in my power to convince her that somebody else had wrote that word on my face. And then when that wasn't working, I said, well, he told me that word and I wrote it down. 
When you do not take responsibility for your actions, that is selfishness. Yes. When you try to blame somebody else or put that problem off on them, on them instead of taking responsibility for what you've done, that's selfishness. Yes, Lord. That's selfishness. Child of God, I looked in your eyes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Open your eyes. What about brothers and sisters? I didn't have a brother or sister to blame it on. I had to find somebody to blame it on. Amen. <laughs> take responsibility yes, Lord. for your actions. David was not willing to take responsibility for his actions. He'd rather an innocent man die than own up to what he'd done. If you think, well, I would never do that. Be careful. Because you never know what you'll do when you get back into the corner. When you think, when you think you would lose it all if this was to come out or this was to happen, there's nothing you've got to be careful. You never know what you might do in that situation. But I'm telling you tonight, you need to take responsibility for your actions. Amen. Number four, the fourth person that David hurt. The first person, or excuse me, the fourth person that David was not concerned about, and I believe that the, 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 the fourth person that David hurt was God. Amen. When David took Bathsheba, he broke, we know straight up, two of the Ten Commandments, which was do not covet your wife and do not commit adultery right there. But David didn't even blink an eye. David did, did not even blink an eye. How is that? Because David had removed God from the throne of his heart and he placed himself there. That's right. He said, I want what I want. I want what I want. Let, let me sum up his mindset in this particular story. I know this is wrong, but I want it and I'm going to do it. You ever had that mindset about something? You knew it was wrong. You knew as you thought about it and contemplated about it and mulled it over in your mind, you knew it was the wrong thing to do, but you said, I want to do it, so I'm going to do it. Right. Your flesh desired that sin, or whatever the case may have been, and I know that it's wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway. Without a doubt. We talked about David's heart this morning. He was close to God. David knew that that was sin. He was a godly man. Yeah. But he said, I want it. Can I ask you something? What is your attitude towards sin? What is your attitude towards sin? What is your attitude towards God? Are there things in your life that you know are sin and yet you do them in any way simply because you want to do them? You, there's things you've been in church long enough. You've heard the preacher talk. You've been to Sunday school. You've heard preachers preach. You've read the Word. There's certain things that you know that are wrong, but you say, I still want them and so I'm going to do it. Now, what grace take care of that? That's selfishness. God. And friend, that's a dangerous place to be. Amen. That's a dangerous place to be. Because lastly, number three, listen to this. Selfishness will ultimately take from you. Right. Selfishness in someone is all about take, 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 me, me, me. Right. <clears throat> but the thing of it is, selfishness will ultimately take from you. That's right. And will leave you busted, disgusted, and broken. Amen. It will leave you busted, disgusted, and broken. You remember I told you that, that Bathsheba became pregnant by David. She had a child, but once that child was born, the Bible says that that child became very sick. The Bible says that David went 
went before the Lord. And David pleaded with God, please don't take this child. Please do not take this child. But the Bible says that the child died. He prayed, he fasted, he went before the Lord, he laid before him day and night, but the child never left his mind. There are two things that we learn from this. Our selfishness hinders our prayers. Yes, Lord. I truly believe selfishness hinders our prayers. The Bible talks about between a husband and a wife. That husband, if you don't treat your wives right, do you know that it hinders your prayers? Yeah. All of you ladies are going to go home and look up that scripture tonight, <laughs> after, amen? I'm dead serious with you. The Bible says, husbands, if you mistreat your wives, it hinders your prayers. I believe that David's prayer was hindered because of his selfishness in this situation. <coughs> but the second thing that we see is this. When we remain selfish, don't miss this. When we remain selfish, God will allow precious things to be taken from us. Yes, when we remain selfish, God will allow precious things to be taken yes, from us. Amen. When all we're concerned about is me, 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 and it's take, take from our spouse, take from other people, we're only concerned about other people. It don't matter who we step on at work or how we get to where we want to go, as long as we get there. I promise you, if that's the way you live your life, you better get ready, friend. I believe in the old saying of what you sow, you'll reap one day. And I believe this, if you continue to take, that one day God will take something that's very precious from you. Do you hear me, husbands? Do you hear me, wives? Don't be surprised when she walks out the door. Don't be surprised when he walks out the door. You see them tail lights get in the road, amen, and then you wonder why. And all you've been concerned about was you. Concerned about your career. Concerned about making another thousand dollars. You've got to work. I understand that. But can I tell you something? They sell men, they sell women today that they put their jobs and their career and their money and their wealth and their position and the applause of men before their own family. And then when she hits the road, you wonder why. Ladies, there's some women that will put their children before their husband. Yeah. Yeah. You listen to me. You got God. You got your spouse. Then you got your children. And let everything else go underneath that. Right. Make sure that you don't show more attention and affection and time to your children than you do your spouse. One day, let me tell you why. One day, that little junior and little Sally Sue is going to grow up and they're going to leave. But guess what? You stop looking at one another. That's why I'm praying to God. Woo! Make sure you don't put other things before your spouse, before your husband, before your family. Amen. Because I tell you, it'll cost you in the long run. There'll be some men, there'll be some women, there'll be some women that there's parents that, that don't have a relationship with their children. Why? Because while that child was growing up, they were busy chasing uh -huh. their dreams. Or, or that parent was, was out on drugs or drinking every weekend. And they left the child with, with aunt so-and-so or granny or grandma. Right. Instead of fulfilling their God-given Responsibilities. God will allow precious things to be taken from us when we're selfish. Selfish is take precious things from our lives. Friends, it is time to wake up. Amen. It's time to get off the throne of our heart and give Lord Jesus Christ that best seat. As I'm closing, y'all can be coming on to the music. After David committed adultery, after he coveted another man's wife and committed adultery, had Uriah killed, 
he brought Bathsheba to live with him. And the Bible says that God sent a prophet by the name of Nathan to David to call David out to, for his sin. And Nathan went before David and he told David a story about a rich man and a poor man, about a poor man that only had one goat and a rich man that had a whole multitude of them. But there was somebody that come to see the rich man and he wanted to feed him, so he went to the poor man and took his goat and killed it, and that's what he fed him. And the Bible says that David could not, did not even recognize that the story was about him. That David did not even recognize. See, selfishness will make you blind of your own sin. Amen. You may be sitting here tonight, and the whole while you were thinking, well, he's not talking to me. He's preaching to my husband. He's not preaching to me. He's preaching to my wife. He's not preaching to me. He's preaching to my sister or my brother. Amen. Selfishness will make you blind of your own sin. And so I pray tonight as we close this service that the Holy Ghost would come and bring conviction where conviction needs to come and he would take the word that we've been preaching tonight and it would penetrate your hard head and hard heart and open yes. your blind eyes. Yes, Let me read Philippians chapter 2. A man who put it up there, Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. What would we begin with? I'm going to read that one more time and we're going to close. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but instead in lowliness of mind, let each other esteem others better than themselves. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Let selfishness die tonight. Yeah. If you're a selfish husband, a person, wife, a son, daughter, whoever it may be in here, let selfishness die tonight. And if we were to all be real honest, all of us got a little selfishness in us that we need to take back to the cross and let the Lord crucify tonight. Let, uh, let him, the Lord, crucify this old self that's in me. Crucify this old flesh. Crucify God this selfishness before it destroys my marriage. Lord, Lord, crucify this selfishness in me before it destroys my ministry and destroys my home and destroys my other relationship. Yeah. We need to come to this old-fashioned altar tonight and lay self and moment and say, God, please, oh, please, purge.
you know, I believe that God is working on some marriages and some homes and some relationships right now. I believe that He's beginning to just use that word to begin to penetrate some heart, hearts in here tonight. And Lord God, I just pray over this congregation. I pray over those that are watching us this evening, Lord. I pray, God, against this old selfishness that rises up in each one of us, Lord. I pray that every one of us would make up our mind to crucify that old self before the cross of, of Calvary. God, I pray that you would begin purging it from our mindset and our attitude and, and the way that we do things and the way that we think. I pray, God, over every marriage and every home in here tonight. And more that each home and marriage that has been plagued with selfishness, with selfish men, selfish mothers or women, selfish uh, children, whatever the case may be, God, I pray for healing. I pray for restoration, God. I pray for blinded eyes to begin to be open tonight, that they may see, God, where they need to make changes according to your holy word, Lord. I pray, God, over this church tonight. I pray, God, for any selfish, uh, self-motivated attitude that may come upon our people. God, any selfish attitude that might try to sneak in and destroy the church. God, I pray, Holy Ghost, that you would keep it out of all of our hearts, God. That, God, we would always remain humble. That we would not think too highly of ourselves. But, God, we not only be concerned about the interests of ourselves, but the interests of others, Lord. God, I pray you please shake every one of us in mind with this word, God. Please, God, don't let it go in one ear and out the other. Please let us see the destructive power of selfishness and self-centeredness. God, I pray right now, let us see, Lord, before it's too late, before the cost of something very precious, Lord. And oh, God, let us see. Bring it all tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
over Brother Wayne. Yes. To pray over his ministry that he has in Lake Park. Uh, that God would continue to bless the, the Christian church. That God would continue to know him every time he stands in the full of it. Not seen. I, I watched a little bit of him this morning. I think he sung this morning, so did he? And uh, so we're thankful what God is doing. They came to us several years ago. And just, just, just like anybody gets a little burnt out and weary for ministry. And I'm thankful that we had the privilege to sow into his life and Sister Sharon's life. And we just want to continue to pray for him and for her. So come come out here and come up here and let's see. Hey, I'm going to get up here and give me a few of the men or whoever would like to come in and pray for them that only come and pray. Turn around.
We've got three kids that are very excited about getting back started. We want to invite you back to be with us uh, Wednesday night and of course next Sunday. We're back on a normal schedule, praise God, and we're looking to see you. God bless you in our closing prayer. We love you. Have a great week. We'll see you Wednesday night. Thank you.